Hello, everyone. Thanks for logging on to CBSColorado.com. Time for a few extra minutes with Mark Schlereth. I mean, the best in the business. We got Super Bowl champion. We got radio analyst. We got TV analyst. He does everything, yeah. which is so <laughs> great because maybe you can break down for us. We were just talking about this on Monday Live. Russell Wilson, what do you think Sean Payton is going to do to get Russell Wilson back to playing like Russell Wilson? Yeah, I think there's a, I think there's a couple of things. I think that in the quick passing game, when you're a guy that's shorter in stature, mm -hmm. and I had this long, fascinating conversation with Doug Flutie about this, yeah. and he said, man, I could never, I could never, the quick passing game in the middle of the football field, and a lot of the NFL, mm -hmm. that's the structure. So if you think about tight end to ghost tight end, so that, that box, that mm -hmm. eight-yard box, a nine-yard box, eight yards deep, that just rectangle right in front of the center, right? That's where a lot of, the, you would consider those dump off passes that, that about 80% completion rate. Mm -hmm. Well, Doug told me, hey, listen, when it's a three-step drop or even a five-step drop, if I have to hitch up, I lose sight of those guys because the offensive line is getting pushed back and now I can't see. So he goes, the quick passing game to me has to be outside the numbers, between mm -hmm. the hashes and the numbers, where the natural window opens up between guard and the tackle sets wider. And so there's a natural hole to throw to. Mm -hmm. So the quick passing game has got to be, that's where those routes have to be thrown to. And then it really comes down to, you know, the play action game, Russell using his body, using his athleticism to get outside the, the pocket. And then that play pass game mm -hmm. where he does an exceptional job throwing deep ball. And the things that, that they missed on, the deep balls they missed on last year just weren't off of that kind of concept. Mm. And they need to get back to those things. Th those things, to me, I mean, will exponentially create a much better player from, a, you know, much better play than we saw last year in Russell Wilson. And and when you look at some of the offseason moves they make, it's probably the biggest one, Mike McGlinchey, Ben Powers, bringing in these big, tough right. guys. Is this to support Russell Wilson? Is this to play maybe a little bit of more bully ball? What is the, the biggest reason of making these big free agent signings? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, you want to be able to run the ball. You want to be able to control the line of scrimmage. You want to be able to control the tempo. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing about Sean, even though he's done – He's done that with multiple backs. When you go back throughout his career, go go back and look. He, he's, you know, fourth in the league in rushing, ninth in the league in rushing, eighth in the league, seventh. Like every year, and it might be multiple backs that are getting those opportunities. Mm -hmm. But he's going to run the ball. He's going to set up his play action. The other thing, you talk to D coordinators that have to face Sean Payton, the screen game is huge. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, hey, when we face any other team, there's, you know, there's eight to ten screens that you have to be aware of like backs and, and, and wide receivers. Because you, you face Sean Payton, there's 40 different screens that you have to practice. Like, it's, it, it's ridiculous. So, you know, a lot of it is is how you support your offensive line. And then can we can we do the dirty stuff? You know, I always get fascinated by people who talk about, hey, um, you know, we don't want to run the ball against eight-man boxes, you know. And, and you, you've heard all that baloney yeah. before. But what I always tell teams or tell people that I talk to is, Every box in the red zone is an eight or nine man box because yeah. the safeties have their heels at about eight yards. So they're two steps. They're in the line of scrimmage. Yeah. So if they read run, they'll be at the line of scrimmage before your back can get the line of yeah. scrimmage. So you better learn how to run the ball in those situations. And that's something that Sean really emphasizes, uh, especially short yardage, goal line, of red zone. How do we run the ball yeah. in those in those situations. So when you talk about those concepts and that makes so much sense and then you look at this Broncos roster as constructed what mm. moves then do you expect them to still make? Where are their holes so that they can actually run this? Yeah I mean I think that I think that they've really addressed the offensive line. Power is a big physical cat you know he'll come off the ball. Um, McGlinchey has grown exponentially at his position uh, and I think some of that is playing across from um, across from Trent Williams. Mm who to me is one of the most fierce players I've ever watched play. And he doesn't try to just block you. He literally tries to murder people. <laughs> like that, like it's unbelievable to watch. So McGlinchey has grown in some of that, just some of that kind of physical nature and, and just some of that takeoff and the things that he's trying to accomplish as well. So um, I think a lot of it has to do with running the ball. I think if you're looking at holes, you know, they're trying to develop a wide receiver. Okay. We talked about the draft. They went out and traded for Troutman, who was a guy that was very highly touted a couple of years ago in New Orleans that they moved up to pick. Mm -hmm. I think in the third round, he was out of Dayton. 
Um, but he is, he's a, like, when healthy, he's a complete player. Like, he's a real good receiving tight end, but he can play that Y, that traditional inline position as well. Yeah. Um, so I think they've addressed that. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them pick up another running back somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that may be after camp starts, a guy who's on the street that they can go out and secure. Because there's a, you know, there's always a few of those guys that are available. But yeah. um, I think I think for the most part, they've addressed most of their needs. And I think they look, you know, from a roster construction standpoint, much, uh, much better on the offensive side of the ball. All right, last one I got for you, Stink. I don't know if you're into making predictions, but it feels like with Sean Payton and what he's doing, the Broncos could fall out of bed and win four more games than they did sure. last year. Well, what do you think the season record might kind of end up looking like? Yeah, no, I 100% agree with you. Just from a... Just from a management of the game standpoint, um, one thing I, I know is a Sean philosophy. You don't get a, sh you don't ever get into a shootout on the road. Yeah. Like you okay. can get a shootout at home, but mm -hmm. we're not getting in one on the road, right? Okay. So, you know, we're gonna play, we're gonna play almost two different styles based upon, mm -hmm. you know, philosophically, based upon are we at home or are we on the road? And um, I'm with you. I think another four or five games is, to me, is just a no-brainer. So I'm thinking you're you're looking at uh, nine, ten wins and, and competing for a wild card spot. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? It's been a tough Gosh, couple of years. It would have been a tough. It's just been a tough seven year run. Here, I, I know right? it really has. How about just? I mean, even if we don't win that many games, how about we just won one against oh. Kansas City? And how about it's not just boring, not bad and boring. Right. Yes, I'm with you. Yeah. All That'd right. be great. Well, we'll take it. Mark Schleyer with joining us tonight. Stink, thank you so much for taking My the time. My pleasure, Romy. This has been such a treat, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.